DoggyDiamondsTV.com Yeah, yeah, what it is, people? It's your boy, Doggy Diamonds. You already know DoggyDiamondsTV.com. I'm here with motherfucking Rozelle. I know him as Rozel, the godfather of noise. You still go by that? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Godfather, no doubt. Listen, we, see, because we got to say godfather now because it's people that have been copying, biting and shit, swagger jacking and shit. But this is one of the one of the originators right here of not not only the beatbox, but just the sounds and just imitating beats. Like, dudes wasn't doing all that shit. So how you feel today? I mean, listen, we know the, we know the true story. So to me, it's like... As long as I'm here, I'm going to always teach the history of what it is so people can't misconstrue the real story. So we know you from, um, well, we first was introduced to you from the Almighty Roots crew. No um, and you was, how, what was it like touring with a band? I mean, to me, touring with a band, it was like hand in glove because basically what they brung to the table, I did vocally. You know what I mean? So it was like a perfect match. And then, and then you like started doing records. I'm like, yeah. what? What was that transition? Because you you looked at it as a beatbox, but now you're doing records. What was that like? I mean, to me, I've always been a a, a huge fan. You know, damn man, you're killing us. This is look, 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 look. Pete Rock walks in the building. Look what when Pete Rock walk in. Listen, listen. Pete Rock walks in. Look, like, well, hold up, hold up. First of all, let me say something. We're not going to bombard this interview, but this is the greatest producer of all time right here. Yo, Pete man, Rock. Continue, man. No, 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 fuck that. No, 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 no. Look, this is the greatest producer of all time. I say it. Listen, when Troy came on, right, I'm going to tell you something, Pete. We was, I was on the first tour, Source Tour. You can ask OC. You can ask, you can ask, listen, you can ask Lord Finesse, right? When Troy came on, we all did like this. What the fuck is that? I seen dudes like, I don't know if I want to perform tonight. Because I ain't got that. Listen. This beat. You talk about a hip hop song that really made you cry? That was a T R O Y. Yeah, 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 yeah. Listen. When that joint came out, B, when they reminisce over you, my God. Like, B, just that line right there. Like, now what record what record brung out that type of emotion and it was cool, you know what I'm saying? You know how you know rap has always been most chismo, but that particular song helps you understand what grieving was about, you know what I mean? Like you you actually feel it, the soul of what he put in that track and the and the C L just delivered like you knew what it was, you know. So you got a um a, a project coming out? I mean, right now, this, I've been working on, on a lot of music series. I've been working on my beatbox university workshops and um, teaching the history of beatboxing. So, you know, I actually did a, a panel with Google YouTube about the history of beatboxing. Um, in October, I'm doing um, Pop Tech 2016 up in Camden, Maine. So I'm doing the history of beatboxing there. So I've been pushing my music series and I've been pushing a lot of my beatbox university trying to get the younger kids into beatboxing. So when you say um history, who is the first beatbox? I mean, you gotta remember hip hop, you know, everybody talk about hip hop, you know, hip hop started in the Bronx, it started in Brooklyn, started in Queens. I say Brooklyn. You know because I'm from Brooklyn. I mean, don't, don't get me wrong. I mean I grew up in Queens so I had a, a different perspective. Like the first beatboxer I ever heard was Buffy from Brooklyn so I, like I mentioned the night like Brooklyn and Queens always had this love hate relationship like we, we see you know that we had a robbery see the deal was y'all had all the bad women out there though right. y'all would y'all would come y'all would come to Queens you know try to scoop the chicks then that's how I got a little crazy then when we would come out to Brooklyn got a little crazy you know what I mean but it was it was always love too you know what I'm saying because when it came to the music like we always the, like the original grandmaster was Grandmaster Flowers from Brooklyn. That's the original Grandmaster. That's before Grandmaster Flash. Now that's when I, I grew up on Grandmaster Flowers. 
Now, don't get me wrong, my cousins Raheem from the Furious Five, now they was the first to put on wax and blow it up. Like Sylvia Robinson exposed them to the world. So they was the first one to put the flag in the ground for hip hop. So I, so I salute them, you know what I mean? But like on the underground street level, like I knew the Grandmaster Flowers, the Disco Twins, you know what I'm saying? The Albino Twins, Infinity Machine, like all them dudes that was he dropping some names that was out in the parks like i was a little dude trying to climb over the fence just to listen you know what i'm saying and then when i finally started going to the bronze hanging out with my cousin raheem and my aunt glorious house over on 180th in boston road that's it that blew my mind i see bambada so i'm going back to queens like with the little cassette tape going yo this is bambada people are like come on stop lying you know what i mean so from what i've seen we had a different perspective. I was the sound system. We had the crazy sound system. Brooklyn, Queens had the crazy sound system. Now, the Bronx put it on the map as far as recording. They dropped them jewels because the first beatbox that I heard on tape was the Fat Boys when they was Disco 3. You feel me? So that's what, that's what spawned me to do what I do here in Buffy. But when I was doing, when I initially started out, it wasn't no name because we didn't have any equipment. I had my crew. We was Positive Sounds. You know what I'm saying? I was on Rockaway, Rockaway Boulevard and 149th Street, Southside. You know what I mean? So we either banged on the table or somebody did the beat with their mouth. That's just natural progression. That's just what it was. I'm going to tell you all something about Queens, too. You could get lost in Queens because it will be like 139th Street, yeah. Road. Avenue place and shit. You'd be like, what the fuck? Where, where am I going? So he admitted Buffy is like the original. So when did Dougie first come onto the yeah. scene? Now, honestly, I think I think Dougie was already out. But because, like, you know, my cousin Raheem, he told me about Dougie. He put me on the Dougie Fresh because when, when I was spitting for him, he was like, yo, there's this cat from Harlem named Dougie. And then when I heard Doug, like Doug was on a whole nother level. So I got to give Doug credit because when I heard Doug, Doug was already the man. When I did my research, I was going to Harlem World and I was hanging out on 133rd and 8th Avenue with Eminon. Like, like Doug was the man. He was the king of the Apollo. You know what I'm saying? What Was Dougie Fresh style more of your style though? It sounded like it was more of your style than Buffy though. You know, I, think, I think back then, Dougie's style was more advanced. Okay, yeah. His style was more advanced, so to me, for him to be advanced, he had to probably start at an earlier date. That, from what I know, from my information, you know what I mean. But the first beatbox I heard was Buffy. But once I heard Dougie, that just changed the whole game. Cause once he came out with his records, and Fat Boys blew up as Fat Boys, the Disco Three blew up as Fat Boys. That just changed the game forever. Cause then you had Ready Rock C, then you had the Skinny Boys from Connecticut. Like it, it just blew up. So. I was the under D I was, nice was D Nice was the beatbox, you know what I'm saying? Greg Nice, Biz Marky, Biz, you know what I'm saying? It was a lot of beatboxes. Every crew had a beatboxer in it. You had to. That was like a essential, essential thing to have if you had a crew, you know what I mean? But at that point, I was like the underground king. I was going to every borough, just bodying everybody. So at what point did you split from the roots? Because then we started seeing Scratch, and I was like, where the fuck is Rozelle at? I mean, I mean, what? Scratch was brought in because all I know took off. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, my, my contractual obligation with MCA Universal, I had to hand, you know, I had to take care of that. So that's when Scratch came in. You know what I'm saying? Because the record the record just blew up over Europe, Asia, South America, Australia. So that just put me on the road like 250 days out of the year. Like I was grinding hard because the record was just blowing, you know what I mean? So but before we go, um, give them all your social networks, how they can stay in contact with you. Yo, y'all can catch me on Facebook, Rozell M. Brown, or y'all can catch me on Twitter, Rozell the Legend, Instagram, Rozell the Legend. Follow. And before we go, you got your son, Rozell Jr. When, when he was picking his name, did you want him to have that name, or did you want him to have another name? Absolutely, absolutely. Because um, to me, to me, I always I believe in legacy. You know what I'm saying? I know, you know, a, a lot of a lot of a lot of broken families. 
you know, we lost that. So to me, it's like after after I'm gone, I want my legacy to continue. You know what I'm saying? I want my impact to continue. I want I want my son to be able to pass that down to his children. You know what I mean? Like we come from greatness, not from it being broken. You gotta, you know, you gotta break the cycle. Break that cycle. Exactly. You gotta break that cycle. So he gotta name his son Rozel too, right? He got it. That's mandatory. You know what I'm saying? Middle name something. You got you gotta keep that name going because. What'd you say? Oh well, that's why we, that's why I'm interviewing them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yo, we, listen, we know all of that. Like, I, I'm not, I'm not one of these new dudes. Like, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm a, I'm a veteran. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I, I've been in the game for a minute. I just called Pete Rock the greatest producer of all time. That's just my opinion. He did all I know, record, right? Yeah. Yeah. See, this is what I'm saying, man. You know, he got to, you know, my son, you know, you know, I'm proud of him. You know what I'm saying? His, his lyrical ability and, you know, his content. So, you know, he's definitely he has the best of both worlds because I used to take him to the studio with me with the Roots and we out in Philly and, you know, he's been on tour with me. So he's, he's seen greatness common, you know what I'm saying? De La Soul. I mean, he's been around some incredible people. He got the cheat code. He got the G code. So for him to be able to take that and then put it in a new perspective, what the kids is talking about now is phenomenal. So we here with Rozell. I'm just happy that I finally got a chance to interview this man. I always listen to his shit. All I know is my shit. Like I said, I was like, yo, he made a record and shit. But the first time I saw him, I just reminded him earlier, was on Video Music Box with the Bush Baby. Shout out to Mr. Man. That's my homies. Yes. You know, it's Khalil, that's that's my homie. Um, what's a Lee Major and yeah, um, yeah. um 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 I forgot uh, uh shit I forgot his name. Yeah yeah yeah. We run things and shit. They they kind of like brought out most deaf and shit too. Remember? Yeah yeah. yeah. Shout out to them. They from um Flatbush Brooklyn Flatbush. and shit like that. So um this I is rock with them heavy back. Then. Yeah yeah that's what I'm saying. And he did flavor in your ear beat and I was like holy shit. So this is him. Make sure you support him. Make sure you follow him. Hip hop. Hip hop. This is hip hop. This listen. This is what y'all be saying y'all want right. You got people who's giving it to you. When you see his name on flyers, when you see his name out there, if you want hip hop, you got to come to it. People can't force it on you, man. Right. If you want it, you're going to have to come to it. Come Peace. This interview was brought to you by Doggy Diamonds No Filter Podcast. You can hear the podcast on iTunes. Just search for Doggy Diamonds No Filter or on SoundCloud.com slash Doggy Diamonds No Filter. Thank you for all your continued support. Hey, thank you for watching. Don't leave without subscribing. Hit that subscribe button. Peace.